everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cassie. Feel free to subscribe to my channel because sometimes I make videos and post them on here. You happen to have caught me right in the middle of Vlogmas, so if you are interested in vlogs and Christmas themed content, then make sure to stick around. One of the most stressful parts of the holiday season is gift giving. Not everyone can afford to buy big ticket items for their loved ones, especially during a global pandemic. So if you're looking for some fun DIY ideas for Christmas presents this year, look no further. Here are five DIY gift ideas. Oh wait, this outfit is not going to work for DIY. That is much better. Let's get started. Each of these projects will have a different skill level and cost level, so I'll make sure to include that in each of the descriptions. So our first project is shrink plastic pins or magnets. Um, I'm making magnets this year, and I'm not gonna go into too much depth about how these are done, because I do already have a video on my channel, which I will put here, <laughs> which goes into more depth on how I make these. I will just do a quick run through for you. So I wanna start with the difficulty level. When I did the difficulty levels for all these projects, um, they're all out of five, but I don't want you to think that that means that like five out of five means super hard. I really just ranked the five of them in relation to each other. <laughs> these DIY magnets are coming in at number four when it comes to difficulty level. The only reason that I'm putting them here is not because they're hard to make necessarily, but a lot goes into it and it can take, I mean, overall for them to be completely done, it does take over 24 hours. It is also the most expensive. I would not recommend doing this if you're just trying to make like one magnet, absolutely not. This is something where if you wanted to invest the money to get the supplies to do this, this is going to be everyone's Christmas present. Like you would wanna make a bunch of these. Um, so I priced all of the supplies to see how much it would cost. And what I came up with was around $50. Now, I want you to keep in mind that that includes getting the cookie sheet from Amazon, which the cheapest one I could find was like 15 bucks. But I also know that you can get those at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Shrink film or shrink plastic from Amazon. For glue, I like to use E6000. Dimensional Magic by Mod Podge. Some magnets or pin backs, really whichever you choose here. You'll also need some scissors to cut out the designs. A spatula, and it's very important that the spatula does not have holes in it. Wax paper and a cookie sheet. The first step when it comes to making these magnets is coming up with your design. You can either draw a design directly onto a piece of paper or you can find a picture on the internet and print it out and trace it from there. So what I'm doing here is finding little icons in Adobe Spark post and then I'm going to create a PDF file and print it out. The next step is going to be placing the shrink plastic over the paper and tracing over the image with a Sharpie. I like to use the ultra fine Sharpies because the lines end up being super small once you're done baking them and I think that they look really cool. Once you have the designs drawn out, you're going to cut them out and lay them on a baking sheet covered in wax paper. The oven should be heated to 350 degrees and you're just gonna slide the baking sheet right inside the oven. And it should take about three minutes for them to fully uh, shrink. <laughs> and then you're going to take your flat spatula and just press them down so that they are even more flat. To seal the magnets, I use Dimensional Magic by Mod Podge, and I just put that on, and it takes about three hours to dry. Then I use the E6000 glue to glue on the magnet to the back of the design, and this takes about 24 hours to fully dry and bond. The second 
second project is painting tiles. So I got this idea because um, if you have been watching me for a few months, then you know that we've had disaster after disaster in our house and recently all the tiles were falling off in our shower so we had to replace them and I accidentally bought way too many tiles. Well, we thought I bought way too many. Turns out I bought six too many, <laughs> which was not that many to have left over. But anyway, I have these six tiles already, so I figured, hey, I might paint these and give them out as Christmas presents. The difficulty rating for this project, this is number three, and then the price range, I put $15 or less. Now, the only thing that could get expensive here really is the paint if you decide to do um, like fancy paint um, or fancy brushes, and then also the spray to seal it. Um, you can't really avoid paying like eight, at least eight dollars for that, and you can either do a spray or you can just do the Mod Podge that you like brush on. The first thing you'll need for this project is, drum roll please, tiles. You can get these at any hardware store. Next, you're going to need some paint, acrylic paint. I use Liquitex, but you can use any brand. You'll also need some paint brushes to apply said paint. And finally, you're going to need some type of top coat. This first step is optional. If you have sandpaper, you can sand the top of the tile. It will just help the paint stick a little bit better. The next thing you're gonna do is pick out all the colors that you want to use and get them all set up on a palette or as you can see here, I'm using a paper plate and then just paint out the design on the tile. Once you've finished painting your design, you want to take that tile outside if you're using a spray type of sealant and put on that top coat. The third project we're doing is hand warmers. This same process can be used to make hand warmers or even heating pads. I've um, one year I made heating pads for everyone for Christmas. This is another one that I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the process because again, there's another video. It's not on this channel, but I did make a video a few Vlogmases ago on the Glendro channel. So I will link that video down below. Um, so if you want more information on how to make these, you can check that out. For the difficulty rating, I put this at number five, and that is because it does require sewing. If you don't know how to sew, this could be kind of difficult. The price, I put $30 or less. You can get fabric super cheap at like Walmart or um, Joann's. If you get the, oh gosh, like the scraps, especially at Walmart, like whatever they have left over from the, um, From the bolts of fabric, they'll usually mark down tremendously. For this project, you're going to need fabric cut into little squares, some rice and needle and thread and scissors, which I did not film here. And you're also going to need a funnel. I just made this one out of my shrink plastic. So the basic idea for this project is you're going to take two square pieces of fabric and the sides that you want facing out, you're actually going to face in towards each other. You're going to sew around the square but leave one little hole for the funnel to fit through. And then you're going to stick the funnel through that hole and dump rice inside until the sack is filled up. Then you're going to sew up that little hole that was left and then whoever you give it to can put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, take it out, and it'll be warm. The fourth project that we're going to be doing is 
Sugar Scrub. Now, this is number two on the difficulty rating. It's not difficult at all. It's literally just taking ingredients and mixing them together. The cost to make this, I put 10 to $20, or I think I put $20 or less. One of the ingredients, coconut oil, can be pretty expensive, but I believe you can substitute olive oil, which is a little bit cheaper, I think. Either way, you just need to have some type of oil. One disclaimer about this, the essential oil that I use in the video, I wouldn't use for this. It specifically says that you should not put it on your skin, but it is the only essential oil that I had right now. So when you're looking for an essential oil to use, I would try to find something that specifically is safe to use on your skin. As the name would suggest, the first ingredient needed for this sugar scrub is sugar. Next, you'll need some coconut oil. You'll also need some essential oils and a container to mix the ingredients in and a utensil to mix them with. Like I said, this project is very simple. You're just going to pour all of your ingredients into whatever container you've chosen to use and mix them together. I don't have exact measurements I just put them in and mixed them and added until it was the exact consistency that I wanted. So it's really just up to you how you want it to feel. I would suggest only using a couple drops of the essential oil though so that it's not too concentrated. gift that we're going to cover today is pretty easy to do. It's just writing a letter. Now you can get more creative with this if you want to by writing a bunch of little letters or little notes and putting them in a mason jar. I received a gift like this a few years ago. My best friend had written me little tiny notes and put them in envelopes and it was like a hundred days of notes or something like that. And it was really cool because some of them would just have like a little memory that we have together. Some would be uh, things that she loves about me, some movie quotes that we both enjoy, song lyric. I still have all of those little envelopes and I keep them in a box. I go through them quite often actually. Number one for difficulty, cost. I put $10 or less just because um, you might need to buy paper, you might need to buy a pen. For this gift, you're literally only going to need paper and a pen, but if you want to get more creative, you can always use a mason jar as well. I don't think that this present really needs much explaining or instructions, so here's me writing a letter. <laughs> if you want to do the mason jar project though, here's how I did it. I took some computer paper and just sliced it into little squares. Um, and then I wrote little messages on them before I folded them up to put them inside the mason jar so that whoever receives the gift can just read sweet little notes all the time. If you couldn't tell from this video, I am a sucker for handmade gifts. So if you have any others that I didn't cover, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this DIY gift guide helped you come up with some ideas to spread cheer to your loved ones this year. I also hope that you have a beautiful day and I will see you in my next Vlogmas video. Bye.